Our final presenter, wherever he is, is over there, uh, has more than 20 years experience developing and selling IT solutions. He's successfully run his own business. His current role includes identifying areas where he can continue to increase the value of their offerings to existing and potential clients, and most importantly, ensuring that that value is delivered. Please join me in a warm welcome from Eklava, Mr. Anton Skurla. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all for taking the time. Um, as is always the case last month, you uh, jotted down a few things that you thought might be interesting to cover in the workshop today. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into some of these in a little, little bit of depth and touch on others, so hopefully cover off uh, all of those. The title of this workshop is The Business System That Every Small and Medium Enterprise Needs and we'll get interactive straight away. So, if you could have any one of these right now, which one would it be? You notice there isn't an all of the above. <laughs> so, hopefully digested that. Give you 10 seconds to pick. Ha, it's good. Spread right across, which is, depending on your business and your circumstance, uh, that's pretty much what we'd expect. Now, given this context, the business system that every SME needs is an accounting system, an enterprise resource planning system, a customer relationship management system, or a marketing automation system. An ERP system is a warehousing system. Great. I'm actually going to present to you today, or talk about, why a customer relationship management system is actually the business system that every small to medium enterprise needs. You might remember this from my last presentation. Basically, the purpose of this slide was to say that if you're uh, the path to your success and your shareholder success is through your customer success and your employees' success in their jobs. This is putting your customer success at the heart of your business. Customer relationship management systems have been specifically designed to assist in that interaction between the employee and the customer to make their jobs easier so that they can make their customer success uh, easier. What we're going to do today, I'm going to identify some high value points for customer relationship management systems give you a feel about what they actually mean and how they work in real life, and then give you a few things to consider if you decide that you should implement one. <coughs> the odds are that if you don't have a CRM, your customer informa information is fragmented. It's across a whole bunch of different systems that aren't integrated with each other, or it's in people's heads. Now, the good news is that with smaller organisations, depending on your actual business, maybe around 10, 15 people, it's fine there. You're actually uh, able to deal with customer queries, customer issues, customer opportunities by knowing your customer well enough. Unfortunately, once your organisation gets to a certain side, size, it isn't as easy to go, I know if I have a question, about, if a customer has a question, I know whose shoulder to tap to get that answer. And in fact, doing stuff like that actually becomes sig significantly counterproductive. So as I say, usually we find probably once your organization's size gets to about 20 plus employees, this information fragmentation becomes a real issue. Your customers, particularly repeat customers, expect that their information is at your fingertips, no matter, no matter who they're interacting with. And this is a growing expectation. So what are the potential consequences? Well, from a perception perspective, if I'm interacting with you and you can't help me because you don't know me, ah, 
I'm going to start feeling that it's hard to do business with you. I'm going to feel that you don't know me. Uh, I'm going to start feeling that you don't care about me, etc. These are the risks. These are the perceptual risks for customer frag uh, information fragmentation. In reality, staff get frustrated, as do customers. Staff spend a lot of time looking for information right, and therefore becoming uh, losing productivity, loss of potential revenue, staff and customer turnover. So, some high, va high level value points. A CRM system is one place for all customer interaction information. So I'm just, I'm showing you here our own CRM system. So we use Dynamics 365. I've just redacted some of the uh, information, very popular word, it certainly comes across in a lot of TV shows I watch, but uh, the black stuff <laughs> is redacted. Uh, basically what you have here is just some general information about a construction company that's one of our customers. Here you have all the activities that anyone across the organization has engaged in with, the, with, with that customer. Here you have some contact information. Here you can't really see it, but that's recent opportunities. If I were to scroll further down, I'd have recent projects, I'd have recent cases. I could click on any one of those to actually get further information. If I want to give Doug a call about an issue, I go to this one screen, which is the account screen, and I have all the information about how my company interacts with their company in one spot. One place to control key customer interaction processes. So this is a process ribbon across the top of an opportunity screen. So this is a sales opportunity. We have standard uh, sales processes, standard ways that we engage with customers. We have steps in the process. The information we provide customers depends on, uh, or potential customers, where they are in the process. Um, and we have gates about moving through the process. Now the benefit of all this is that, and I'll show you a little bit later, I can now interpret all that information based across sales stages pipeline. My, anyone who's selling has a guide of how they should move through that process. Anyone who's interacting actually starts capturing relevant information in bite-sized chunks across that whole process. And the third one is one place to understand your customer. So here's um, a report that literally took me 15 seconds to, to do. It's for a particular customer, and I think that's a non, one of our non-for-profit customers. Last two years, all the sales by the solution type and the value, all right? Again, 15 seconds. Um, <coughs> quite easy to do once you have the data in there. So, CRM's focus on customer interactions. Where do we, act, we interact with customers? We interact right across this life cycle. We market to customers, we sell to them, um, <coughs> we create things for them, we implement them and support them, and then hopefully we start that cycle again. So interactions across our business are right across all this. They're not just in marketing or just in sales or whatever. They're right across the whole life cycle. This interaction life cycle, by the way, is your revenue life cycle. If you're going to get revenue, you're going through this. Yeah? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is give you some very quick examples of how in each of these areas the CRM can help. <clears throat> this is a screen, our screen from our, as I say, we use Dynamics 365. You can tell it's arranged in the similar sorts of buckets. Sales, support, which is service, marketing, projects, etc. So when I look at my work, I actually am engaging with my customer across those various functions, etc. Marketing was the first one. Well, creation of marketing lists. If I've got all this data in one system, right, how easy is it for me to create marketing lists? I've got information about the segment. I've got information about the customer. I've got, <coughs> I can create these marketing lists across any sort of campaign 
uh, at any time. Right? Uh, Sonia said, in terms of her model, you need something where the customer data comes from. CRM is ideally suited for uh, being that, uh, that thing where the customer data lives and, and, and comes from. Once I actually send out a campaign, the CRM system can actually deliver a whole bunch of useful information. This is a email campaign that we sent to uh, one of our customers. This one's really designed for adoption. So we send tips and tricks. This is one of our larger customers. They've got about 318 users. So we sent them this email on, on, on trips and tips and tricks that might be uh, of interest. We get information on how many opened them, um, how many didn't make it, etc. Again, once just automatically. Um, what's interesting about this one is there are 124 unique interactions but total 432 opens. So that means people were actually coming back to the email for multiple views, which is great. We can drill down on the list. We can find out who opened it, who didn't open it, what areas were uh, of interest, what weren't. You know, maybe there was a certain type of user that didn't find that, uh, that particular thing of interest, so we can then modify our campaign. From a sales perspective, we run our opportunities in there. We've got all our contact details. We've got all of our process details. Our pipeline is generated automatically. We get a forecast that's generated um, automatically based on pipeline stage. This, again, sales processes and interactions. So this is very similar to that previous slide. But again, that process ribbon across the top, it's not limited to sales. It can be used to delivery, factory support. Any process that you want to control and automate can be enabled in your CRM system. We're a professional services company, fundamentally, so our factory and our delivery is kind of combined, you know. We develop software and we deliver it. And the enablement of our factory and delivery is really projects. So this is a projects module within our CRM system. Uh, this is for a customer. Series of sprints that we've done for them. Uh, the sell value, the cost value, etc. on each sprint. Actuals in terms of hours, people book times into the, into the system, right, uh, and expenses. We use this to do our cost control, our time control, our utilization rates, and we generate invoices from the CRM pumping straight into zero for the actual financial uh, management. Now, of course, again, once you've got all this data in um, one system, you can use other tools to improve your decision-making capabilities. This is a Power BI report, Microsoft again, that looks at um, gross margin on projects over the last 12 months. We can look monthly by project manager or projects by PM. Whatever metric actually makes most sense to you, once you've got it in that centralized system, you can run these sorts of tools over it to get any, pretty much any report or visualization that you want. And finally, from a, from a support perspective, in terms of cases, right, we support our customers. If they have issues, they um, can log a case, etc. We have processes enabled in the CRM for the management of those cases. So this is all the active cases for a particular customer with uh, when they were created, what the status is, who the chief consultant is, etc. Clicking on any of the cases, I go in and I can get details about what the case is, what the communication has been around the case. Similarly, from a reporting perspective, run Power BI over this. This is now all our customers. Case age, how, how long the cases have been 
worked on and what stage they're, they're in. I have to point out to the more observant of you that the cases that are greater than three and five weeks are mostly waiting for customer update. Because what happens is you fix something, you send it off to a, a customer, and then they don't come back and tell you that it's fixed. You know, you have to continually chase them to say, is it fixed? That's one class. The other class is we also manage enhancements through here. So <coughs> if people want changes to the system, they'll get logged through here, and we bundle them up in sprint cycles. So sometimes these cases are just waiting there to be bundled up into the next sprint cycle. So again, just a quick overview of what a CRM system looks like, right, and what the high value, uh, the, what value it, it, it might bring. Um, CRM ROI. CRMs have been around since the mid-90s in full-blown form. Um, they were initially uh, introduced by the big banks and government uh, departments and things like that. And ROI's studies have been done on them uh, for many years. This is just one study I found off the web. It's from Nucleus Research. They reckon $8.71 return for every dollar spent. It was a pretty good return, I think. Um, getting these ROI return analysis is actually quite a complex process. So at a high level, I just want to give you one thing from one of our clients, right? We are doing with 15 people what we used to do with 50. Now these guys have embraced CRM in a big way and they, they haven't embraced it just from a um, data capture and interaction management perspective. They've embraced it from a process control perspective, right? So their business processes are integrated and controlled within the CRM. And that's what enables them to get that sort of, uh, that sort of return. So just very quickly, um, I've given a sheet out there for you, just as a little um, um, thing to think about, particularly around information fragmentation. So if you could just have a, have a bit of a think about how you would, you know, uh, using your current set up, et cetera, get that sort of uh, information. Just give you a couple of minutes. <clears throat> so hopefully I, I, I've given you some feel so far for why having a centralized place where you store your customer data, your customer interactions, and actually control your customer processes can be of value. Okay? Um, you're capturing data. By using a system like this, you're continually capturing more and more data that you can leverage, that you can get better insights uh, out of. Um, however, and, you know, should you decide to embark on Implementing a CRM, here are some key things to, th to think about. CRM is not set and forget. Yeah? It's not like a finance system where you kind of set up your chart of accounts and all that sort of stuff and you basically leave it alone for three to five years until you change your, your business. CRS, CRM is a dynamic system. Your CRM system needs to give you the ability to adapt to change in customer segments, channels, and business processes, right? One of the things that we find working with custom customers is once they actually start using these sorts of systems, they learn. They change the way that they behave. So the, the system needs to be continually fed to leverage the learning. They learn more about their customers, they learn more about themselves. Adoption. Adoption is about your people, your employees, actually using the system. So to get your people using the system, the balance needs to be right between 
customer success, employee success, and management information. If your employees feel that management is just putting data in for data's sake, they're not going to want to use it. They need to see value to them, to their success, to their business processes. They need to see their customers being successful as a result of this to drive um, adoption. We do get quite <coughs> often, once people see the value, management particularly go, wow, there's all this data <laughs> that I want to capture right? and put too much of a burden on employees to, to capture that data. Salespeople are notorious for this, right? Salespeople do not like putting data <laughs> into systems unless they actually can see the benefit, unless it's actually showing that the close rates are increasing and that therefore, you know, they're, they're, they're getting more commission or whatever. Training and change management are critical. Um, two types of training, there's functional training versus process training. So the, the, the big CRM players like Microsoft or Salesforce or you know, Sugar or whatever have usually online training courses on the functional side. Right? Unfortunately, the days of giving face-to-face -face training on functional software stuff are probably over. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to make the, the user um, train themselves, right? So that's available. But you should think about process training, right? Because you need to link, like for example, that sales process, we need to link the sales process. That's training about our organization, training about how we do business and how that business is linked to this whole process of um, uh, information capture and control. Embedding, again, it's not set and forget. You gotta, Go back, talk to people, are they using it? What value are they getting out of it? Huh? And feedback loops, as I said before. As soon as people start using this stuff, new ideas happen. They, it's a great tool to show where process and productivity improvements can occur. So you want to be able to feed that back into the not set and forget scenario to continue getting more value out of the system. have to be agile. Why? Because you can't know everything you need to know up front. It's a learning tool. <clears throat> Your highest value functionality will change over time. You'll fix one problem today. In a month's time, you'll go, whoa, hold on. There's another problem here that is actually more valuable. Let the achieved ROI drive further investment. That customer that we talked, that, that I mentioned, who said we're doing now with 15 people what we used to do with 50, 25K sprints, 25,000, stop. What's the next piece of value? 25,000, right, stop. Over a period of two years, they probably invested two or 300,000. In the, in the system, but that's the return that they've got. And they've let the ROI from the original sprint <laughs> actually drive investment in the second sprint. It'll vary business to business, but as a rule, let the ROI drive the further investment. And finally, partnering. Uh, your business process and productivity needs are going to be similar but also different, right? I've said that the CRM systems have been designed for these specific things in mind, so the software vendors have actually pulled out all this IP, but they all will also be different because the difference is actually your own character and some of the differentiation of how your business works and how you can leverage your own character and IP out of uh, your business. A partner needs to be able to therefore translate the business need to CRM solution design, right? You need to get the balance right between out of the box and customization. Right? Uh, I had too many, a lot of people think, oh, well, we'll go cheap, we'll just get the out of the box stuff, and then they try to kind of force people to do the out of the box kind of
kind of way. Um, and what they find is, yes, it didn't cost them a lot of money, but there's also not much adoption. Um, and everyone scratches their head after six months saying, why did we invest in this? Right? It's a balance between out of the box and customization. Agile. Uh, and ongoing engagement, right? It's not set and forget. Um, you need to choose a partner. If you're going down this path that you're going to be happy with for a long period of, of time, a real working uh, relationship. So, again, just focusing on that, that link between employee success and customer success. I was at a digital marketing conference a few months ago and there were these uh, you know, <coughs> very senior digital marketers talking about their digital marketing strategies. And one was from a, a very prestigious large university in Australia. And he said he couldn't see the value of CRM. Right? And he's right, because from his lens, he's not interested in human to human interaction. He's interested in machine interaction. He's interested in having everything automated so you take the human out of the equation and you've got all these pieces of data that are interacting with, you know, in that case, students. Right? Um, all he needs is a database, right? a customer database with a whole bunch of stuff in it. He doesn't need a CRM. But where you have human to human interaction across different channels, across different deliverables, etc. The CRM system is a system that's been specifically designed to leverage value for you. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Any questions? Very small business. Um, how well do CRM systems interact with um, things like MailChimp and other sorts of other systems that you can use for marketing campaigns and so on. And my second question is around data security and how secure is the data that goes into the CRM system? So <coughs> the, the, they will, you know, I, mean, this, I can speak most specifically about Dynamics 365, right? It, but I'm sure Salesforce can do it and everything else. Uh, be able to pass data to other marketing systems. If you're using MailChimp to control your flow of uh, emails and things like that, um, I don't think there'd be any issue in creating the marketing list and then passing that data off for that control aspect, right? And then you could bring certain data back or whatever, right? We use a product called Click Dimensions, which is a solution built into um, uh, Dynamics 365, which doesn't pass data, it uses the same data. Right? So all of those metrics that come back are then linked to the actual client record directly in the system. Uh, in terms of security, they all have comprehensive security setups in terms of stopping people from being able to see certain records or other records, right? There's, the, I mean, talking Microsoft, we're talking Salesforce, we're talking, so their security models are actually very strong, right? They actually have the flexibility to even, uh, if you wanted to, to even control security at the field level. Yeah. Any other questions? Click dimensions. Sorry? That yeah, that, that, that gives you a um, workflow visual user interface to set up your campaign, but also a nurture campaign. So you could have. It's like Infusionsoft or Entreport. Sorry? It's like Infusionsoft or Entreport or Active Campaign. Yeah, it, 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 it's basically, I mean. It's basically targeted that solution into the mid-market. It's like Adobe um, or, or, or um, I can't remember the other one, yeah, but even the SAP marketing engine, but whereas they're complex and targeted at the high end, right? If you've got a 20, 50 person marketing department, Click Dimensions is targeted at the small to medium end.
Uh, how do you mean? Uh, what, what type of product should we use? You mentioned uh, 365. Uh, yeah, look, I reckon there are only, there are only two yeah. for this space, Salesforce and 365, okay? Now, there are others like Sugar and there's some free online stuff and everything else, okay? <coughs> there's, uh, there's some value in using them to get your head around CRM, right? Without investing too much. So there's some value in using them as a as a as a training exercise and to start accumulating things straight away. Right? Once you actually want to leverage uh, the broad functionality, then really you're going to be edging towards Dynamics 365 and, and, and Salesforce. SAP, Oracle, they have other CRMs as well, right? but they fit much more into that huge enterprise uh, space. Sorry? So that, uh, the way we run our projects, we actually, all our people put timesheets, right, straight into the, um, into the CRM, and you have mechanisms in there to actually put timers on, if you're charging by the 15 minute block or whatever, or you can put a diary entry in, you know, it's quite flexible. Right, and then that gets logged against uh, a project or a line item in a project and, and all that. Um, we're looking at a new CRM called Sales Trekker. Have you had any experience with that? Or? Never heard of it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Great. Thanks, Thank you all.